my product's like a sore dick. You can't beat it. What's up? I hope you're having an awesome weekend. I hope that everything is awesome today, whatever day it is that you're choosing to watch this recap. Shout out to all you guys for watching, subscribing, and sharing this video, and liking as well. You guys are freaking awesome. So, you know we gotta do our shout outs. Let's go ahead and get into them. I actually have it up this time and ready and waiting. So shout out to Mr. Big D1152. I'm not even gonna ask. So to answer your question some more, the crooked cop's name is Jukebox. Thank you for that, because I was kind of like, damn, what's her name? And then according to the storyline, Jukebox and Kanan are cousins that grew up together. Alright, because I wasn't sure if they were like, you know how you have fake cousins or real cousins? I heard her say something about cousins, but I wasn't sure if it was like real cousins or fake cousins. You know what I mean? Because I'll be having fake cousins. <laughs> oh, that's my cousin. But y'all ain't family, no way. Alright, so the other shout out that I'm going to give is to Dialtone21. He said, the cop chick didn't kill the clerk, but you two fine, so I'll let it go. Good recap though. You sure? I could have sworn that she shot the clerk first, and then she went over and shot the kid that was, that was working with her. I don't know. But alright, I'll take your word. And the last one, she didn't shoot the guy. Okay, some somebody else said that she shouldn't. She didn't shoot the guy behind the register. She ordered the young guy with the gun to shoot him. Then she shot the kid in the chest. Okay, okay, okay. So you guys proved my point wrong. <laughs> I guess I was wrong. It's okay. <laughs> Two beats one any day. So it's alright. So let's go ahead and get into this recap. So it, I felt like it was pretty cool how they started off the whole scene where we had Angela. She was putting on her clothes. She was getting all dressed up, looking in the mirror. You know, like one of these. I'm looking at my mirror right now. And then we had Tasha doing the same thing. And then in the flip side, you had Jamie. He was talking to her on the phone and he just had her in like his boxes. I thought that was kind of cool because it's, it's almost like showing the whole fact that you know they're all in the love triangle they've all been together at some point well not all been together but y'all know, know what i'm talking about right so yeah i, I don't know it's just kind of like it all made sense to for them to have the scene the way it was and tasha right now she's determined not to let him have the kids come over to the house to his new house with Angela anymore because of what happened with Tyreek and to be honest being a mother myself I don't blame her I'd probably do the same thing I'd be like if anything you gotta meet up somewhere not necessarily in my house because we ain't cool like that anymore but y'all you gotta take them out or do whatever but none of that they going to stay over there overnight or anything like that because yeah I don't trust that so Angela, she overhears that he's talking to Tasha about the situation and about, you know, that he can't have them, he can't pretty much have them come over anymore. And Angela, she apologizes once again for the incident. He's like, yeah, that could never, ever, ever happen again. Like, he's really stressing that fact. Kanan, he's talking, well, he's really trying to get back into the game now. Like, he's looking much better, much healthier. He still has a lot of cuts and burns and things like that, but... He wants to, he's ready. And his cousin, Jukebox, was like, yo, I bet you can't even jerk off. And I was like, okay. <laughs> that was weird. And then when she leaves, her little, her girl is there. And then um, they pretty much, she helps him to see, or she, I guess it was kind of more so a test that she was trying to see and then report back to Jukebox to see if he could be down with what they're about to do. The little heist that they was about to do. So what he did was, what she did was, yeah, well, Jukebox said you can't even jerk off. And he just, she was like, go ahead. So he starts jerking off. For a minute there, I thought I saw his stuff. Did y'all see it? I mean, y'all guys probably were like, oh no, I didn't want to see it. But I, I feel like I saw a little, I mean, it probably was a fake one. I mean, hot dang, like, 50, you doing all that for the camera? <laughs> but yeah, so... I feel like I saw some of his, when he was jerking off, and then she was just, she let him jerk her off as well, and I'm like, okay, I, I, I see what's going on here, it's interesting, <laughs> they be having all these hot scenes, getting the girl all hot and bothered, honey, I swear, 
So yeah, they they were doing their little things so he could so she could see how good his hand is. She did say he needs to work on his hand because she did report back to Jukebox to let her know. The school reported the Tyreek incident where he brought a gun to school. She reported it. They reported it to the police. So that would have actually been a record. So Angela, she went to Tasha to let her know that she got the record as expunged, and Tasha was just like. Why you didn't do it for me and I know you didn't do it for Tyreek. She was like, I know you did it for Ghost. And I was like, wait, she just said Ghost. Like, it's all out in the open now. <laughs> I was like, I don't even remember him really telling Angela, I mean, telling Tasha that he had told Angela about him being Ghost. So if that was the case where, you know, maybe he didn't tell her or she didn't know, she just pretty much ratted out the whole thing just right there. Did y'all notice that? I was like, hmm, interesting. Jamie, when he found out that Angela went to go see Tasha, he really wasn't feeling that. And he was like, oh, you should have asked me permission. And she's like, I don't have to ask you permission. And he was like, yes, you do, especially when it comes to my wife. It's funny how all of a sudden she's your wife. Like, I felt like he kind of disrespected. It kind of seems like he's maybe because he's stressed or whatever but he's like showing his true colors like even when I heard Tasha talk a little bit when later on when she was talk talking to Keisha you can see she gave up a lot of herself in order to be with him she doesn't even know who she is anymore because she used to dress the way he wanted her to dress and we've seen him make her change an outfit so that she can fit in with the role of the club wife she didn't pick out any of the furniture he did everything so it's like she she never really had to think for herself kind of thing. So it's like now she's becoming the person who she used to be before she got with him. Which is why, you know, Lakeisha, she actually likes that. Keisha, her friend. But, yeah, and I, for him, he's going to have to understand that Angela's a different type of woman. Like, she's the type that's, like, on some boss chick status. She's been taking care of and doing everything for herself. So... Either she's going to have to tone it down a little bit to be with him or he's going to have to like learn how to, they're going to have to really do a lot of compromises what I feel in this type of relationship that they're in. But I don't know, they both, now we're seeing that they're both really strong characters, you know? They both have really strong characteristics about themselves. Tyreek, he has to go see a therapist, kind of like his part, of, part of his punishment. And his mother has a little sit-down chat with him, and she's like, you know, we're a different type of family, especially from the people in your school. So what you have to do is you have to make sure that you don't tell them more than they're asking. You answer the questions, and that's it. So he's like, you want me to lie? He's, she's like, not necessarily lie, but just don't give more they don't offer any information. I, I feel like that's what she's trying to tell him pretty much. Angela's sister comes over and we already know Paz. She's really, I think her name is Paz, right? She's really like, she's even like more outspoken than Angela. Like Angela's not that really outspoken. She's just like really strong. But her sister's outspoken. Like we all have a friend like that or we know someone like that or whatever. I, I know several people like that. That they'll just, they have no filter. I can be like that at times. It just kind of depends on the situation. But I know when not to kind of thing, if that makes sense. There's a time and a place for everything is in my eyes. But yeah, there's certain people that's like that, and she's one of those people that if they feel a certain way, they're going to say it. My mom is like that. And that's how she is. And when they were all sitting down and talking, she did mention, oh, how did you, because he asked about her kids, and then she was like, they're good. No, her son, I think. And he's like, she's like, he's good. And then she was like, how do your kids feel about the whole divorce and everything? Then it was like silence, cricket, crickets. So she's like, oh, okay, I see. And then Angela's like, it's going to happen. She's like, yeah, I bet. Like, you know, like on some, yeah. Guys in those types of situations usually stay with their wives but want you to be their side chick and F you while they stay with their wives type of situation. That's what tends to happen a lot of times. Not always, but that's what tends to happen. So I already know this game that y'all playing. That, that's pretty much everything that she said right there with the look that she gave her sister. Like, you know, and the, um, when Angela had kind of removed herself for a minute to, to just step away, 
they have like a little side conversation where he's talking about the club and he invites i think i don't know who it was if it's her son or if it's like her man or something to be a part of the club if they want to and she's like nah i don't think so because it's gonna be awkward and he's like how so once you if you and angela don't make it and i mean Although that's an effed up thing to say because it's like you, you're kind of waiting for somebody to fail or you kind of feel like they're going to fail. It could be reality and it could possibly happen, especially with this crazy fiery game that they're playing right now. So now Kanan, he's ready and he has a crew. He has jukebox crew that she had picked and they all set out to go and get the jewels. And she's one of the people that's called to the scene and she's like, yeah, I just saw a black Escalade with four white males, you know, just giving everything all wrong. It had no license plates, no nothing. And the crazy thing about it is when Kanan was in the, um, in the jewelry shop, one of the boys that was back in the, um, in the convenience store that, you know, the one that was kind of like her protege or whatever, he was one of the same people that work in this nice establishment. So I'm like, why are you doing all of this if you have a decent job? Because usually when you work at like a jewelry store, you get paid pretty good. So yeah, and it was more so like an inside job. But once Kanan got what he wanted, he shot the dude right in his head. And the, you know, the guy didn't really expect that. And I think that was like real messed up of him to do, but, but he has no heart and it's almost like he'll kill anybody. He don't care how close you are to him. He'll, he'll just like, he's real cutthroat. <sighs> he's one of those people you definitely can't be cool with. Like you gotta watch them like, you, you can't feed them with a, a, a 10 foot rod. <laughs> you gotta feed them with a long spoon type of thing. Like, you gotta... <laughs> so, um... That woman that she was trying to work with Jamie, she tells him that he needs like more of a social media type of presence because she's like, she can't work with somebody that's a ghost. And I was like, it's funny how she uses the word ghost and that's what he always calls himself because he didn't want to be put out there. Of course not. Not when you're in that type of industry. But now that he's in the legit industry, now he got to like start. She said that it's good to show your face with your, cust with your people that's coming in, the Patreons or whatever, because that shows that you're allowing them to feel kind of like a celebrity type of thing and it makes them want to come back which makes a lot of sense but um it's like now he just got to be more out there Luis he has totally like changed his life he's now a servant well let's not say a servant because it's not that bad but he's now he's going from like kingpin to cleaning floors I'm like I know that has to take a toll on his like on his manhood, on everything, like going from having tons of money to now be probably getting a little bit of money to clean floors. He just looks so different. He didn't even have one like his, what does he usually wear? Like a hat or something, right? Cause he just looks so different. He even looked like he lost a little bit of weight, but I'm not really sure. <laughs> I think it was just the outfit, it could have been. But yeah, now he's doing that and Knox comes to visit him. Knox tells him that Lobos is out and Lobos is going to kill his family. He's coming across the border and he needs to testify against him in order to keep him in jail. Because he's pretty much just trying to manipulate him so that he'll do that and also be able to take Jamie down in the long run. But I'm like, at the end of the day, Knox, you being mad petty because she's not going to want to come back with you, especially after you've been stalking her and trying to take her down. Like, come on, get out of here with that. Like, I know he's not going to probably take her down in the long run, but it could leak back to her. And he's just, he's just mad that somebody took somebody from you is basically the problem. But it wasn't even that strong. Like, she was done with him. She was tired of him. You see, when they was having sex, she looked like she wanted it harder and rougher. Like, she wants a manly man with some big old muscles to put it on her to lay down the business. And he just wasn't doing it anyway. So, even if she not with him, she not coming back to you. So, yeah, then they showed the scene where, like I was saying, Tasha and Keisha was talking. But um, Ta Keisha found out that... Tasha's been bringing a gun to her establishment, to her little shop or whatever. So she's like, why have you been doing this? And she just says, just to make sure we're protected. But you, she was like, is there anything else more than that that I should be knowing about? Remember, she's using the hair salon as well as other places in order to start 
hiding the drug money and things like that. But she's not telling Keisha that because the less Keisha knows is the better because let's say she gets picked up by the cops she won't have any knowledge and that's legitimate she won't be trying to like hold anything back if they want to do a lie detector test they won't catch nothing because she doesn't know anything so it's kind of better that way but still i feel like it's kind of messed up because that's your friend like you know at the end of it all they're gonna come for her first even if she doesn't know anything and she'll get released or whatever she's still gonna have to go through that if they was to get caught Tommy, um, well, let's, before we get into Tommy, Dre called up Ghost because he just heard some information that Tommy's about to get got by the Koreans. Remember the guy who got his finger chopped off in the last one? Well, he's, he's out for revenge. Like, he don't really like Tommy. He never was feeling Tommy. You, we already know that because he's a blanquito. He's a white guy or whatever. You know, that's one of the main things. And plus, he worked with Ghost. Ghost is a black guy. They don't like black people. It's like a whole bunch of things they have against him. And, you know, Tommy just be coming through like he's the boss and everything. And a lot of people don't really feel the way that he... He portrays himself or the way he comes across and things like that. So he's going to make a lot of enemies along the way. And that's the crazy thing about it. Oh, yeah, and I forgot to tell y'all that Tasha now knows that Holly is pregnant and that she's thinking about having an abortion. But she does tell her that you should tell Tommy before making any type of decisions because if, you know, I would hate to be you if he were to find out that you killed his child. Because I think, I think that Tommy is going to really, maybe he might be shocked initially if she was to tell him. But I think that he would be overjoyed because you know how much he values family. He values relationships and friendships and things like that because he never really had that. So I think that it might really change his life once he finds out. Okay, so now back to this. So yeah, Dre tells him that, you know, that Tommy's about to get God or whatever. So he tries to call Tommy up. Ghost tries to call him, but he's not answering. You already know he's not, he's just flipping it, pressing end call. He's not really trying to hear him right now. He's just playing up ignoring it, which sometimes you got to do. But in this situation, it would have been good if he actually answered the phone. So he ain't answer. And he's at the confessional right now. He's just like talking about his sins to the um the priest and he also mentions that <clears throat> he doesn't really want to do this this is not something that he wants to do but it's kind of like something he's his back is against the wall you know he he feels like there's no other option at the moment so he just has that conversation and when he comes out all in a sudden he comes out and these people are shooting at him he didn't even he wasn't even able to like really see who it was because they was in a car they kind of like did one of them drive-bys but I can't even say it was a drive-by because they were shooting like they had some machine guns going, 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 shooting up somebody's car. He got shot in the shoulder or the arm, but then he was like hiding behind the car. Yo, lucky thing that he was hiding behind the car and this fool about to come out and start shooting back. I'm like, there's no way that you're not going to get hit if you try to shoot back. But he was going to give it his all and, and try, you know which wasn't going to be a smart idea. I just, I just, in my head, I just saw everything going all wrong, y'all. I was just like, I was like this. Yo, this is crazy. Yo, I should I should do a live thing one of these days. I, <laughs> I get so hyped sometimes. Like, it's unbelievable. So I'm just there like, yo, this is crazy. He's about to get killed. No, I don't want Tommy to die. You know, he, he's a real, like, he makes it interesting. So then all of a sudden, you see somebody with the hoodie on. What's up? I don't got a hoodie on, so I can't really do it, but, yo, some hoodie on looking sexy as ever, y'all. Comes through with the burners, with the guns real quick. Bang, bang, gets two of them in the head, and then the other dude that was left, I guess the one that was actually driving, he drove off real quick. So I guess it was three of them. It must have been two of them that was on the, like, the passenger side. One was on the passenger side, one was in the back, like, on the same side as the passenger side, and then you had the driver. Somehow he bypassed the driver, even though he was on the same side as the driver, he gets two of them, the ones that were shooting, and they sped off real quick. And then he just started running away, looking fly as ever. So, Tommy didn't get to see none of this, and that's the part that I hate about it, is that Tommy doesn't even know that at the end of the day, it was his friend who saved his life. He just thinks, like... 
they ran out of bullets or oh they finished they didn't feel like shooting me anymore nah it was a real reason why they sped off the way they did but he didn't get to see none of that and that pissed me off but you know i was hyped i was like yes yes <laughs> this is what i do in the movie theaters why people will be like oh my god girl <laughs> for real so um and the crazy thing about this scene too was that in the cut sitting down in the car was um what's this guy's name was his like head of security detail guy that got a cut in his face i don't know his name but he was he was the one that was sitting down watching the whole thing so i don't know i'm kind of feeling funny about him i don't know if he's really trustworthy or i don't know we gotta see what happens with him so following this that particular scene jukebox and cannon were at the strip club you know getting titties in their face just having a real good time i'm like damn i need to go back to the strip club to the strip club like jocelyn hernandez now <laughs> so yeah they were they were there you know just talking and chilling you know getting them vibes in and oh, i thought i saw something on my arm y'all so they they talk about what's his next move gonna be and he says that his next thing is getting his revenge like he just wanted off ghost and she's like you know what maybe you need to consider and just really think about is he worth more dead or alive so it's definitely something that he's going to be contemplating now and perhaps he might try to like talk to ghosts and see what he'd be able to do work out with him or try to use him real quick get back in good graces with him and then you know then try to off him i don't know but i think she definitely gave him something to think about tommy goes home and he has like blood leaking from his arm and holly's like oh my god like what happened to you and he's like i think it was lobos men they trying to get me he told her what happened and she's just like she just took up her jacket and was out and he's like yo where you going she was like i'm gonna go get bandages and an antiseptic or some crap like that she said two things so he he didn't think nothing of it he's like okay my girl's going out to help me i knew this girl was up to something because i'm like nah if anything she would have tried to find something in the house and do what she gotta do she's just like baby it's gonna be okay she, she i knew she was scheming she had something she was ready for something so what she did she went straight to the jamaicans she went in there like you know the mother was like, oh, you want to see my son? Took her to the back. He was like, money first, then you talk. She gave the money. I'm like, where she get so much money from? But I'm like, maybe it's the money that Jamie gave her to leave and she never left. Or maybe she got some of Tommy's money because she was in the house all by herself. I don't know where she got the money from. I guess we'll find out more about that maybe down the line. But she gave him a, a envelope of money and then she shows like James and Patrick. So she got a hit out on him too. Cause I guess she realizes that her her boyfriend is not really going to do it, and she probably don't want to do it. So now it's like, all right, you know what? I'm gonna hire somebody to do this. I'm just hoping that this whole thing gets revealed that Jamie was the one that saved your man's life. You know what I'm saying? And then somehow he comes back and lets her know, and she calls all this off because this is getting out of control, you guys. This is crazy. It was just so much in this episode. Like I cannot wait for next. Sunday morning so I can see this like as soon as I see it come on maybe at 12 o'clock or whatever time on demand I am watching it because this is right this here right here is crazy y'all crazy <sighs> power is life <laughs> all right guys let me know your predictions down below more shout outs to come on the next week so thanks for watching and I appreciate all you guys stay fabulous live free and soar limitless I'll see you in the next one later <laughs>